we had a look at creating this piece of wood and uh, texturing it in Substance Painter, but also texturing it in Blender. And here I am back in Blender uh, with the textures from Blender. All right, and I just wanted to show you a couple of things that you can do with this uh, if you choose to go this route. All right, so for example, you can take this and Shift D, you can duplicate it and add another one here. Let's say we're making uh, a wooden crate or something. Let's add a bevel on here. Let's come to modifiers, bevel, let's give it 3, 0 0.01. All right, just to round it off just a little bit. So let's take this one and then shift click this one, control L and choose copy modifiers. We can get the same bevel on this piece. Now, if you look carefully, you will see that the texture is just repeated because we, all we did was duplicated it. So it looks, you know, it doesn't look that convincing. Um, so let's go into the uh, UV editor here and we can see that we can select various pieces. If all we're really going to see is the tops, you know, let's say it's a wooden crate and you're not going to see the bottom really, um, you could come over here and in edit mode select this face and let's just watch it carefully all right and you can see I've got this one selected because I selected here and it selects there if you don't see that make sure you've got this arrow diagonal arrow going up and down on it. so select that face it's selected on the UV map and then try just GY to move it up or down or GX or even just G, you really don't have to constrain it. Just move it to another place on the UV map. And now you've got some differences. Okay, wait a second, where I slid it to. Uh, I don't really like that, so I'm gonna select that. And G, just, just move it around somewhere until you get something that looks a little bit different. We can take this piece again, and if you don't see the arrow, just Put it on there if you use it shift d i'll bring another one out we'll just do three of them and now this one i i need to do something with this so select that face g i'm going to move it down maybe there how's that look all right so that thing looks somewhat different now i'm going to go into the shading editor it's all wood it's all the same material Let's do something uh, a little bit different with this stuff here. So a simple thing that you can do, if all you have is one image, like a diffuse, okay, that goes into the base color, and you don't have roughness and uh, height or normal and stuff like that, you just take this Shift D, duplicate it, pull it down. I'm going to move these out. Take the vector that you had originally, plug that into the vector there add a vector bump take the color plug it into height i'll leave this at one for now and we'll see what happens plug the normal in and you can see that it's very very bumpy now change that to something like 0 0.1 and you have just a little bit of bump on there let's go back to here all right, you can play around with the different um, HDRIs to see if maybe there's something you prefer to work with that looks nicer to you. I'm just gonna come back to here. Let's go back to the shading tab. So we've done that. You can adjust the roughness if, as you like, if you want, or you could plug something else in there. And so what I sometimes will do, this is just to keep it very simple, okay? There's more complex ways of doing this. Take the image texture, Shift D, bring it down. I'm gonna plug this in like that. But we're gonna use a different image. So open up um, something like a grunge texture. Find a grunge texture that you find online, just search for grunge, or something with black and gray and white or something. I'm gonna, I'll try this, see, see how it works. Take this and plug it into a color ramp, the color into the fac, and then the color into the roughness. And what you will start to see is some really shiny areas and some less shiny areas. And if you adjust this, watch the image, you can see it getting shinier and shinier. OK, 
Okay, and I'll bring that back. And you should see it getting less shiny. Let's try a different image. What we can do is we can take this and make it like that. When it's black, it's very shiny. And when it's white, it's less shiny. Now, ideally, what you want is you want a really broken up grunge texture so that you have areas of, of, of shininess. So none of these are working too well yet. Uh, let's try this thing here, see what this does. Uh, you can see that right there. I'll make this blacker, and you see, it almost looks like water stains on here. And less. So you can do a lot of different things. Now, let's try something else here. And let's say we want to make some pieces of wood that go like this. Let's just take this Shift D, pull it up. Go into edit mode, scale it in the X. Well, let's let's zoom in and watch the texture. Scale it in the X. See, it's squishing the texture. Let's scale it in the Y a little bit. And we can even take this whole thing, maybe move it down. Let's take that and rotate, uh, rotate Z90. Let's say we wanted it like that. Scale that in the X. Let's say we wanted that over there. Okay, it doesn't quite maybe look good, so we'll just come in and I'll select the top. And, oh, that's weird. I got a grunge image there. Well, just come over here. That was the last one I used. I'll go back to your wood. And let's take this G, just move it into the middle. All right, and I'm going to scale this in the Y. I'm going to make the size of my UV island here it's called an island uh more you know smaller because my piece is smaller whereas this piece is you know represents a big piece and this represents a smaller piece and now the texture might look a little bit better on there and you can do the same thing on the sides as well if you want to you can move them around and you can make things different but now we could have that piece there you know and we could uh duplicate that to make two of them come in and say you know what i'm going to move that just to make it something different now i'm going to come back here and one more thing i want to show you really quickly so you could build up <laughs> i don't like the uh overlay at all so let's 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 deal with that let's just go back and choose that for now and that'll do it on all of them Okay, um, you could build up a crate, you could build up a wall, you could do wood paneling like this. You know, try different different woods. Um, but the one thing I want to show you is, don't forget over here to turn on ambient occlusion. Now watch here, especially where this piece of wood joins these ones. Ambient occlusion. See the shadow there? Let's take these and actually move them down to about there, let's say. All right, that already looks better with without there and with it and sometimes I'll, I'll bump this up to a higher value two might be too much in this case but it does it does tend to look uh, better don't forget to make sure your face your faces are facing the right way by doing that and then you can shut these off and look all right and so we get a nice wood material on there in blender uh, with the ambient occlusion and varying uh, these you know the, the wood um, by manipulating the UV uh, and of course you know these ends here look very similar and so if you if you needed to show that part just go into UV editing select that find it and say okay so I don't want it like that G move it somewhere else that looks completely different and let's take uh, this one there so if I'm going to be rendering it from that that position I now don't have that problem. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you for the time being. We'll do lots more uh, in the future.